You know the great thing about rooting is that you can try out features that barely any other phone has. That's the feeling I got when I rooted my Pixel 5 running Android 12 Beta 4. Now I know what you're thinking, why would you root a phone that is running a beta software if it's just going to get updated in less than a month? Well that's the thing, most people shouldn't root their phone especially when it's running a beta software like Android 12. It's just a huge hassle. It requires a ton of research, you need to wipe your phone, and you need to accept that your device could get bricked or stop working if you run into any issues. However, once you reach the top of the mountain, you can do things that you never knew were possible. In my case, I was able to try out exclusive Android 12 features that haven't even been released yet. In this video, I'll go over all of my new discoveries and towards the end, for those interested, I'll even show you how to root your Pixel device running Android 12. Starting with the Pixel Launcher, I upgraded the app drawer's search bar and made it more universal. Before on my non-rooted Pixel, I could only do searches for installed apps and do quick Google searches. Now I'm able to search for a lot more, including apps, contacts, options within the system settings to quickly open menus or toggle stuff like the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, get suggestions from Pixel tips, do Google searches, and even launch app shortcuts. It's just an all around more robust search engine. If I like to remove anything from these search results, I can just tap on the three dot menu in the search bar, choose preferences, and disable any of the options. I even love that when I begin to scroll through the app drawer, the search bar fills up the entire top portion of the screen. It's a great modification, but it's not fully stable yet. Sometimes when I search with a specific letter or word, the app drawer just crashes. Another thing that I was able to do with the Pixel Launcher was to replace the Google Discover panel with the good old Google Now screen. It even follows the new Android 12 dynamic theming engine and supports a dark theme. Before, with the Discover panel, I would only get bombarded with a bunch of clickbait content. Now I get a feed full of contextual information about things that actually matter to me, including my commute, parking location, upcoming appointments, birthday reminders, holidays, package delivery status, weather info, a to-do list, stocks, and a lot more. Sure, this screen is already accessible within the Google Discover panel when you tap on the little in-tray icon, but most people don't even know that it's there since it's so hidden, or just forget that it's there. It's much better to have it appear when you slide into that panel. Moving on, probably the coolest modification that I was able to accomplish is that I can customize Android 12's new Monet dynamic theming engine. And I don't just mean choosing different color sets from a color palette like you can already do within the wallpaper and style app. I mean actually choosing any custom color as your system theme, including typing in a specific hex code. It's convenient when you don't like the colors that are extracted from your wallpaper, yet you have no other choice besides changing the background. On top of that, if I'd like the dynamic theme to be a lot more colorful and brighter, especially when it comes to the background, I can increase or decrease the theme's intensity. I can also find the exact colors that Android 12 is extracting from my wallpaper to use as the system theme. Finally, for whatever reason, if the navigation gesture is bothering you or you just want a full screen experience, you can choose to remove the bar without root. All of these modifications are possible on a rooted Android 12 smartphone and it's honestly improved my smartphone experience so much. If you'd like to find out what these modules are called and how to get them to work, I'll go over that right after telling you about Spike, the sponsor of this video. Spike is an alternative email app that improves your workflow by turning that old conventional inbox into a modern feature packed experience. Watch this. In my inbox, any email conversation automatically gets turned into chat like messages and gets rid of those repeating headers, signatures, and stiff formalities to make the conversations fun and easier to read, like a human. If you'd like to see the traditional email format for any message, you can just click on it to expand it. Probably the coolest feature though is that you can even see when a person has read your email even if they don't use Spike. And you can add voice messages and GIFs to spice up the conversation. It's honestly helped me boost my productivity and respond times. To top it off, Spike organizes my inbox amazingly. They do this in three different ways. The first is through contacts when choosing people mode. The second is through the subject line with subject mode. Or you can just keep the traditional chronological order with inbox mode. But that's not even the best part, because with Spike, low priority messages like newsletters or spam automatically get separated from the important mail, so less important emails won't bother you. You can even delete them in bulk to keep your inbox clutter free. As if that wasn't enough, Spike brings a lot more than just email functionality. It has my entire workflow all in one place. I can see all of my calendar events and respond to invites including straight from my email feed. 
call or video chat with anyone that has email, including Spike users and non-Spike users. Create group chats to message my team in real time, even if they don't use Spike. And finally, I can create a to-do list with Spike's task management feature. Every letter I type and each change I make automatically gets synced across all my devices and are accessible on my smartphone, desktop, or web browser. It's the best email service out there to keep my workflow organized and help me be more productive. And the best part is that it's free on Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. It's also free for personal use. So if you're interested in downloading Spike, click the top link in the description. Anyways, to get everything I showed off earlier, I used two Magis modules and two Expose modules. The first mod is called Android 12 Extensions, and it's been created by an excellent developer called KDragon. Flashing this mod will enable that awesome new universal search bar, the custom dynamic theming engine, and a few other tweaks that you can make to the interface, such as changing the touch animation, unifying the signal icons within the status bar to only show the current Wi-Fi or cellular signal, and even enable a very minimal version of the new Live Space feature, which is set to replace the at a glance widget name. It's a very powerful mod and it's both a Magisk and Expos module. Once you flash the zip file within Magisk Manager, the app will let you know the other steps to get it to work. It's basically just having you install two more Magisk modules called Riru and Riru LS Post. Afterward, within the LS Post app, you just enable the Android 12 extensions module and ensure that all the recommended apps are toggled on. Restart and the Android 12 extensions app should work. Unfortunately, the latest version of this mod, which supports Android 12 Beta 4, is currently an early access file for those who joined KDragon's Patreon for $5 a month. I would recommend supporting him not only because he put a lot of time and effort to let us try out these Android 12 features, but also because in his Patreon he has another module that fixes the safety net so that you can continue to use apps that get blocked on a rooted device such as Google Pay. As of now, there is no other way to pass safety net on the latest beta version of Android 12 without this module. Still, if you don't want to pay, you'll just have to wait until he releases the files to the public, and he usually does after a few weeks on his GitHub page. Next, to reinstate the Google Now panel on the Pixel Launcher, you'll need to flash an Expos module called Discover Killer, and this one is actually free to use. I forgot to mention this earlier, but this module doesn't just let you replace the Discover panel with Google Snapshot. It also gives you the option of instead using a custom app. So if you like to bring up your browser or a social app when you scroll to the far left on the home screen, you can do so with Discover Panel. Finally, if you like to get rid of the navigation bar for a full screen experience, then you'll need to install the full screen slash immersive gestures mod found within Magis Manager. Additionally, this mod lets you disable the back gesture for either the left side only to make it easier to access side menus within apps, or remove both sides if you wish to remap the back gestures with other apps. Last but not least, for those who want to root their Android 12 Pixel device but aren't sure how to do it, I actually recorded myself doing this process on my Pixel 5, so that way you can follow along. Just keep in mind that I'm not responsible if you break your phone, but that most likely won't happen if you follow my steps. Your device will get wiped completely, so you will need to back up your data. And when the next Android 12 beta update arrives next month, you'll need to uninstall Magisk, restore images, download and install the update, and then install Magisk to the secondary slot. There are videos online that show you how to do this if you're not sure. Anyways, let's move on to the rooting tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to root your Android 12 device. I'm currently going to use my Pixel 5 running Android 12 beta 4. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you back up everything on your phone because we're going to completely wipe it. So I have an application called Google One, and you can do this as well. You just go into the storage section, uh, and then down here, you can back up your multimedia messages, photos and videos, data, all that into the cloud, good to go. So that's what I did. On top of that, you're gonna wanna make sure you go into the settings, click on system, and then go into the developer options, and make sure USB debugging is enabled. There it is. After that's done, you're gonna go onto your computer, you're going to plug in your phone and it may ask you for authorization, USB debugging authorization. If it does, click allow. It's going to allow you to trust this computer. From there, you're going to want to go on your desktop and make sure that ADB installed. Uh, ADB is installed. So you're going to go to this website. I'll link it down below and you're going to click on download SDK platform tools for whatever device you have. I have Windows, so I did that. Oh, and by the way, I grabbed this tutorial from XDA developers. So this is not just 
what I came up with. This is from their page and I'm just following their rules. If you want to do that, you can just go into the description and I'll link it down below. But if you want a video, this is it. Anyways, once you download the platform tools, you're going to open it up, open, go into platform tools again, and then you're going to go into the address bar and type in CMD. You're going to search that up. It's going to bring up the command prompt. From there, you're going to type in ADB devices to make sure that your phone is connected. If you see the number, you, it is connected. From there, you're going to have the device reboot into bootloader. So just type in ADB reboot bootloader and then press enter. Your phone is going to restart into the bootloader. And while that's loading up, you're going to go onto your desktop. That's the bootloader, by the way. And you're going to go on your desktop and you're going to go to this website, developers.android. I'll link it down below as well. And you're going to look for Android Flash Tool. Click on that. You're going to click allow ADB access and you're going to find your device. Your, the, it should find your device if you're if you did this correctly. You're going to press on the pencil icon and from there you're going to disable lock bootloader, disable force flash all partitions and enable disable verity and enable disable ver verification. You're going to click on install build and then you're going to confirm it. I accept. Again, this is going to wipe your device, so make sure you back up everything. And from there, it's going to install Android 12 Beta 4 onto your device with these two options disabled. And if you had Android 12 Beta 4 before, you're going to need to do this process anyway because you are you most likely didn't disable these two options. All right, so now it's downloading the software, it's going to install it. In the meantime, you can also download and install the Magis Canary app from GitHub. Here you can see, if you scroll down here, you can tap on the Magis and you want to download the Canary build. So you want to click save. I already downloaded it, it's on my desktop. And then you want to put this on your phone. On top of that, you should download the factory image from this website and your developers. Scroll down, find your device and click on the file next to it. Click on I agree and download it and that's going to download right away. I already have it downloaded so I'm not going to do that. Then go onto your desktop or wherever you downloaded it. Extract it. It's going to take a while to extract. So once it's extracted you're going to want to open this folder. Click on the folder again and then click on the third folder. Here it is boot.img. We're going to want that. So drag that onto your desktop to make it easier to find. And we're going to be placing this onto our phone once our phone boots back up. Currently, it's still installing the software on my computer, so I'll be doing that in a minute. It says install complete. Now my phone's going to boot up. And now you're just going to want to set up your device. So once your phone is booted up, you're going to want to connect it to your computer again. So click on file transfer on your phone. On your phone, you're going to want to open up your files. So let me just open that up real quick. Open your files and then you're going to want to drag in the canary. And you're going to want to drop in the boot.img file. Boom. So on your phone, you're going to go to your files. There we go. Open that up. Then you're going to want to go to apps and in app install files.apk. That's the magisk one. You're going to allow from the source. My bad. And then you're going to install the app. Now that it's installed, you're going to want to open it up and you're going to click on install. Select, pot, uh, select and patch file. You're going to find that file that we just placed onto our phone. So you're going to click on pixel five or, and then you're going to choose boat.img and then click let's go. All done. Uh, it'll tell you where the output file is because it just made, it just patched the boot.img file. So you're going to find that in your downloads folder. Go to download. There it is, magisk and it's patched. Drag that onto your desktop. Boom. From there, I would rename this to just rename this to magisk underscore patched. 
There we go. Now we're going to enable USB debugging. So you're going to go into the settings. You're going to go under system, developer options, and make sure USB debugging is enabled. Once it is, you're going to want to reconnect your phone. And on your desktop, you're going to go back into the platform tools. Oh, and by the way, you're going to allow USB debugging authorization in the platform tools. I would actually drag the magisk underscore patch.img file in here. And from there, to make it easier to find, type in CMD in the address bar within the platform tools folder. It's gonna launch it. Here, you're going to type in ADB devices to make sure that it's connected, and it is. And finally, uh, we're going to reboot into bootloader once again. So, there we go, it's gonna boot up. Now that we're in fast boot mode, we're going to type in the following command, fast boot flash boot magisk underscore patched dot img. And if the, full, if the file is inside the platform tools, this should work. If it's not, you can just drag it in there. And finally, you're gonna wanna hit enter. There it goes. Boom, that's it. Now, just go on your device, click the power key, and start it up. Unlock the phone. Oh, whoops. Unlock the phone. Open the Magix Manager app. And there it is. You should see that it's installed. And once it is, you have root. Okay? So you're good to go. You're able to download um, any modules from this page right here. You can enable any super user commands. Safety net doesn't work currently, but there's a way that you can enable it. And I talked about it in the video. So there you have it. That's how you can root your Android 12 pixel device on beta four or any other beta really. So that's it for this video. If you found it to be very helpful or insightful, drop a huge thumbs up, especially if you're rooted and I helped you find something really cool with these mods. For those who keep coming back, but aren't subscribed with the notification bell turned on, what are you waiting for? Each video I make is top quality and you won't find this type of unique content anywhere else. Either way, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!